So at this point in the course, you have come up with your idea, you've posted it online, and now you're sifting through the masses of people that have responded to your ad. Hopefully you've posted it on Odesk, Elance, and Freelancer. That's what I suggest. That's the best way of casting your net as wide as possible. Depending on how specific your application is or how well you've described your application, I would imagine you probably, if you've waited about 24 hours, have anywhere between 20 and 50 bids. I think the bulk of them will probably come from Freelancer because that is where the people follow the um, quantity over quality credo. Elance are going to have a lot fewer, but the quality there is going to be much higher. Those are going to be the developers you're probably going to put on your short list. Picking a freelancer is crucial. Later in this course, we're going to do this in real life, in application. If you're new to the course, you probably won't see that because at the very beginning of the course, I'm going to start off by taking ideas and then starting the process of recruiting developers to build the idea. So if you're too early, just be patient. It'll come out in a week or so. Right now, we're just going to talk over, in general, how do you pick a good freelancer? And this is a skill that I've developed over the last five years and the last hundred-some applications. I'm going to teach you how I do it, how I rank my freelancers. There could be other ways of doing it out there, and I'm not saying those are wrong. I'm saying this is what's worked for me. I can walk you through my logic and my rationale for why I do it this way. I rate them on five things. Number one is relevancy. Relevancy means that when you're looking at a freelancer, look at their portfolio. How many applications have they done that are similar to what you're building? Not only similar in subject, similar in industry, and similar in size. Those are three dimensions that I look at these. So one of my projects was a taxi management app. Now I'm going to look for someone who, one, hopefully has worked in some kind of logistics application. Hopefully someone who's worked in cars or taxis or transportation. Sub that, I'm going to look for someone who has built any type of application that I think controls moving parts and controls actual employees. If they don't have that, eh, it's probably a strike against them. Then I'm going to look for applications they built that have similar features. My application had text messaging. It also had an online screen where they can pick their shifts and pick their hours. It also had a system where they could communicate through text message, and that text message system was essentially like a robot that would talk back to them. That's a little obscure, so I'm going to look for... But I'm going to look for someone who's maybe built text message apps before. Really anything along those lines. I might look for someone who's done online scheduling. That could be something. If they have neither one of those, then uh, it's probably a strike in my book as well for the term relevancy. The last sub-dimension under relevancy is going to be scope. Look at the application they've built. If you're proposing to build an application that you think will take a month to build, see how many other applications they've built that also took them roughly a month. Most of the freelancing applications will show you how long their projects lasted. Odesk will tell you how many hours they build on a particular project. Elance, I believe you can just go and look at the job posting. Freelancer is similar in that regard. So if you're looking for a big project, look to see that they have big project experience. If you're doing a smaller project, then maybe you want to make sure that they can pull off a quick job as well. They're not going to disappear because the application that they signed on to build is only going to take them a week.